This episode is brought to you by Training Data. If you're new in data science and want to get into the field, or if you're already in the field but want to progress, well, Training Data is the platform for you. They offer courses on feature engineering and selection, model tuning, interpretability, and much more. You will get both the math and the intuition behind each method, but also Python code ready to power your own projects. So if you're interested, visit the link in the description and don't forget to use the code AI Stories to get a 10% discount. Digging a bit more into this, do you have some kind of fixed list of things that you would do whenever you start a competition? I don't know, one, looking at the data to training a baseline. What are the steps that you usually follow? Or maybe there aren't and it's very problem specific and you don't have a, a fixed approach. I don't have a fixed approach, but I have a rough approach that um, I often use. Um, and that's basically starting on a high level, looking at the data, just to get like a feeling. Also, just for choosing the competition, if it makes sense or not. Um, sometimes the data has some flaws or there's like um, some luck involved and those kind of things. So I really just a high level look at the data is enough to understand how, how big the data is, what kind of models and architectures make sense. Because I, for example, I'm really interested in deep learning approaches and deep learning models, but some for some problems, deep learning just doesn't make sense. So um, I try to avoid those competitions and rather join ones where you can do like a lot of deep learning and more architecture engineering and this kind of things. Um, and as soon as you have like a high level understanding how the data looks like, I implement a very simple um, pipeline for training a first model. Having done a lot of competitions, I already have kind of a boilerplate code. So I don't use any of the high level frameworks, but have like developed my own kind of code based framework over the time. And I start using this and then yeah, really design like the, the simplest model I can think of and set up a pipeline which runs really end to end, like taking the training data, uh, training a model, evaluating the model, also calculating the competition specific metric. Mm -hmm. um, because for some competitions, the metrics are quite complicated and it can take some time just to implement or replicate how they, they evaluate your model. So I, having a very simple model, I use this to um, just to test if everything runs smoothly. And as soon as this first simple pipeline is set up, I continue with the next step. So that's the, the crucial thing. As soon as you don't have like this set up, mm -hmm. um, a simple pipeline, getting like the competition metric, having a very good validation set, you don't need to continue mm -hmm. <laughs> because everything else you will do uh, in the future, will give it not not good good results and you won't have any any feeling how good the model will perform if you can't track like the competition metric. Um, so this very step needs to be finished so until I go to the next step and the next step is then just like iterating through as many ideas as I have. So reading a lot of uh, research papers, reading past solutions to competition, which have been similar. So given that that Kaggle has so much knowledge, you can also go through past competitions and read what people have done there. Yeah, read through research papers, read through GitHub repositories. So really a lot of reading, re-implementing and trying as many ideas as you can, but still using a very simple model, just because that enables you to iterate more quickly and at the end of the day, um, after like two months or so, it comes down in on like who tried the most ideas. It's not like mm -hmm. <laughs> who had the most luck in finding something, but like finding something useful really depends on how much you tried. Because ninety nine percent of things won't help your your architecture or the problem. So it's all about trying as much as possible to find like the very specific thing that um, also differentiates you from other competitors more like a pro approach i think for a beginner it's good enough to mm -hmm. just like uh, try to get your own stuff as good as possible um, and then the very last step so the second step is all about research and iterations and the last step is like scaling up your architecture and um, approach so using a deeper model using more data 
using um if you use like if it's like a computer vision problem use higher resolutions for your images this kind of things but i only use this like in the last two three weeks where i already have like the rough solution in mind mm -hmm. and it's like really hedging or like coming really up with the, like the final final model i want to submit okay very interesting so there are three steps first is getting a baseline a baseline and a pipeline to run so that's you make sure you have a model that you can evaluate on the competition specific metric secondly iterating and finding ticks that work for this problem but while keeping a simple model because it enables you to try many things and then third step um well in the last days weeks or of the competition you try uh, bigger models in order to boost performance i guess yeah and so on the second step just one last question on this what can you try if you don't change the model is it more on the data side on the data processing side is it more on the hyper parameters tuning what can you improve if you keep the the model fixed yeah, there there are so many things you can improve so you can look at the data specifically so you can filter the data um, reduce some noise there you can um look at external data so sometimes there are like external data sets which are which are useful you can augment uh, the data you can do a lot of data augmentation so the model generalizes better you can use different losses mm -hmm. you can tune the hyperparameters you can look into post processing so sometimes after your model predictions you have some rule based post processing which which can help uh, improve your your score So there's, there's a lot of things you can, you can do apart from the actual modeling.